welcome to the Language Fuel podcast. Our mission is to fuel the teaching and learning of languages worldwide. I'm your host, Joanna Smith. Hello and welcome once again to the Language Fuel podcast. If this is your first time joining us, welcome indeed to our podcast. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in again. I'd love for you to leave a review if you appreciate the content that we're providing for you. This episode, we are finishing a little mini series on classroom management. We are doing a three part series. The first two have been published already, so if you have not heard those two episodes, I do highly encourage you to stop listening to this one, go back and find the other two, listen to them first, because this is the third and final part in this little mini-series on classroom management. Now, as I mentioned in the first episode, I view classroom management as an issue of student engagement. Whether nobody's paying attention or is bored with your lesson or whether they're too energetic and they're not paying attention because they're doing plenty of other things, the issue is the same. They're not engaged with you as the teacher and with your lesson. Uh, And how do you get student engagement? In my opinion, I'm framing this as a leadership issue and I'm suggesting along with other people that a classroom teacher is a leader and you know that you're doing a good job when you have followers. So you have your students following what it is you're leading them to do. So I'm using the framework published by John C. Maxwell in his book, The Five Levels of Leadership. And again, I will put the link to where you can get his book in the show notes because it's a great book on leadership. Highly recommend it to you. And his five levels are this. Positional, which is the very first thing, you have a position as a leader, it actually doesn't mean very much at all. You may not have any skills, but you find yourself in that position. The second one is permission, and this is the real key to the whole thing, in my opinion. Your students, in this case, give you permission to lead them. You have to earn the respect and the trust of your students, and you do that by developing a genuine relationship with them. So we did talk about this at length in the first of this little mini-series, so go back and and listen to that if you want a refresher. So that's a real key because you can't actually get onto the production stage until you have earned that right, you have earned the permission to lead them. After that, you go on to the third stage, which is production. And that is kind of where all the nitty-gritty tools and techniques come into it. We went through some of them last time in the second of our three-part series in terms of what you can do to proactively manage your environment, the physical environment, the social environment. We talked about giving super clear instructions and knowing that your instructions are clear and everybody feels safe and knows what to do. We talked about also having um, really great lesson plans with you and and there is also another podcast on lesson planning if you don't know how to plan a lesson and then finally we ended last podcast talking about some intervention techniques you know what if there is despite all of your proactive efforts still some negative behavior and it will happen because you're dealing with humans there's going to be things and we talked about first of all identifying the degree to how serious it is if it's a minor disruption will you just handle it in a minor way perhaps even non-verbally and you carry on but going all the way up to the serious things, in which case you have to do some quite serious interventions. So do listen to the second one in this little three-part series if you want a refresher on that. So today we're going to finish our little mini-series with looking at levels four and five. So level four, he talks about people development. All his uh, levels, as you'll realize, begin with the letter P so that they're memorable. So level four is people development. So you're already leading them. They're being productive. They're learning uh, what they need to do in terms of the language that you're teaching them. Now level four is about developing them as people. And he goes specifically to talk about developing them as leaders as well so that they can be a positive influence. You know, isn't it wonderful if you'd have a class full of people who are wanting their classroom to be a positive place for learning and they're encouraging their peers to learn and and they themselves are managing their own behavior as well to to make it a really great place. So that's kind of how I see level four working out in the classroom environment. 
I'm going to just read a little excerpt from the website that's um, explaining his levels. He says, the more you raise up new leaders, the more you will change the lives of all members of the team. And I'm going to insert class there. As a result, people will follow you because of what you've done for them personally. And as an added bonus, some of these mentoring relationships are likely to last a lifetime. So I think that's fantastic. And I'm sure if someone were to ask you, hey, which teachers do you remember the most from your time as a student? You could probably name one or two of them. And you may not necessarily remember why, but the chances are they had the deepest effect on you, the most profound effect on you. And if you remember back to the first podcast in this series, I quoted something from Maya Angelou that is just absolutely fantastic, which is, I'll bring it up again in my notes here. She says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Now, we talked about that in terms of building a relationship. But I'd like to suggest that that's very relevant also at this fourth level. You want to be encouraging people to feel empowered themselves, to give them uh, empowerment over their environment and influence over their peers in a positive way, obviously. So this, you can't do this without having done the previous steps, which is that you've established a respectful environment in your class and you know how to intervene when something negative crops up. So you're really trying to develop little leaders in your classroom so that they have that influence for good. How do you do that? How do you develop leadership skills in other people? Well, you've got to give them a go. Let them have a try. So you need to encourage all sorts of things like group work. Anytime you put students in a group, naturally somebody is going to lead it. Now you as the teacher will soon find out quickly who already has great leadership skills. You don't want to be putting the shy people with the strong people all the time because they will be overwhelmed by the strong people. So you need to mix it up and allow them a chance to naturally take the leadership in group environments. So again, it's about managing that social environment for your students to enable them to try out leadership a little bit. You could take it a step further and give them presentation opportunities. Build that into your regular classroom activities. Every now and again, somebody is going to do a, a presentation on a topic, give them time to prepare you definitely have to break it down for them. You know, give them checklists, what they need to have done before they're ready to present. Um, give them some really safe feedback. Make sure their social environment is conducive for other people to give them safe feedback as well. You may want to encourage peer teaching, whether that's informal or formal. I do it all the time in, in a very informal way. Ask your neighbor whether they know the answer to this question. And that gives everybody the opportunity to try to explain it to another person. And even just that task is a little bit of leadership, trying to get really good communication skills on. And obviously, the whole time you're doing these sorts of things, you're still encouraging that environment of respecting others and developing rapport. So if you do this on a regular basis, you will in fact be developing leadership skills amongst your students. And that is a classic sort of a level four leader. Not only are you in a position of authority, not only have you gained the permission of your students, not only are you in a very productive school environment, but now you are definitely operating at level four, which is people development. You're developing new skills in the students so they can then also foster these great environments. And that's wonderful when they would then go on to their next class after you, you know, they'll carry that a little bit with them as well, which is awesome. Then we move on to the fifth level. He calls, John C. Maxwell calls this level the pinnacle. And actually this is turning in on itself and it's talking about you individually being at the pinnacle of everything that you do. And I guess, um, you know, your career, your personal growth and all that sort of thing. So it's a little bit different, but um, I'll read an excerpt from his website again and the link will be in the show notes if you want to follow up on this. 
He says, the highest level of leadership is also the most challenging to attain. It requires longevity as well as intentionality. You simply can't reach level five unless you're willing to invest your life into the lives of others for the long haul. But if you stick with it, if you continually focus on both growing yourself at every level and developing leaders who are willing and able to develop other levels, leaders, you may find yourself at the pinnacle. He goes on a little bit later to talk about pinnacle leaders create opportunities for other people. They create a legacy in what they do. People end up following them because of who they are and what they represent. They get a reputation. What I like is his description that he says level five leaders often transcend their position, their organization, and sometimes their industry. In other words, as a teacher, if we're talking about the position of a teacher, you end up doing and being way more than a teacher, maybe even being way more, being bigger than your organization and, you know, connecting with other organization, making things happen, making synergies happen between your school and another school, for example, um, and even your industry. Maybe you start to influence another uh, industry that's not just an education. So those are some signs that you're really that at the top of your game and growing. So how do you do this? Again, the magic question, how do you become a level five leader? Well, I would like to say you need to have all of the other things in place before this will naturally be where you end up focusing. So you need help to make sure you're developing your leadership skills amongst levels one to four. And then you need to ask yourself, what else can I do to invest in myself? It's an attitude, I think, as much as anything, that you're constantly uh, on the lookout to improve what you do, reflecting on your practice day to day, talking with other people, asking for their feedback. Hey, could you come and see my class, see what I could do better? Offering your opinion and advice in a safe way to other people. I guess one of my passions in life is continuous growth, continuous learning. Uh, we here in Language Fuel are, are very much into this. Our mission is to fuel the teaching in languages, you know, worldwide. And so we want to do this by supporting people like you. Uh, language teachers out there doing a great job. We want to encourage you to keep learning. So we have put together a whole bunch of courses that you can take online. So some of them relate to some simple things that we've been talking about in this little mini series. Uh, and that includes, you know, lesson planning and, and the things that we've mentioned all throughout the series. We do have courses on those types of things. And we also provide community. We have a Facebook group that you can join if you want to have a membership at the Language Fuel Academy. And, you know, we are developing a culture of respect and trust with one another. And we want to ask for advice and give advice. So inspiration, community and information are the, the ways that we're trying to do that. So if you are wanting to continually improve your practice, you know, it would be fantastic to have you on it at the Language Fuel Academy. So please go and find us on the web. We'll also put some links in the show notes and how you can do that. So that's it, really. Um, levels four and five of John C. Maxwell's system has five levels of leadership. One of the best things that he mentions, though, is that you can actually be at different levels with different people. So it's a very interesting thing to reflect on. You may have worked really hard to get a great environment in your class and develop relationships. But you know, if someone joins the class cold, you got to start right from scratch with that person. You need to start from the beginning and develop a relationship with them because if they don't have it, they're not going to follow you either. So even though you might be on level four with a lot of people in your class, you could still be way back at level one or two with some others. Um, you know, in the class. So be conscious and ask yourself, where am I at with these levels with each of the different students? Where do I need to put a little bit more focus in and that sort of thing? I hope you have found this little mini series interesting. It's a new way of doing the podcast. Um, it's a way for us to dive a little bit deeper into some of these issues rather than just taking one 15 minute slot or whatever. So I'd love your feedback on it. Please go ahead and send us an email. You can contact us through the website or whatever, languagefuel.com. I'd love to hear from you and I really hope to see some of you in our Language Fuel Academy as well. Until next time, Thank you for listening. Please do leave a review and a rating on iTunes, and I will see you next time. Kaki Thank you for listening to the Language Fuel Podcast. You can now.
navigate to the show notes and links via our homepage at www.languagefuel.com. See you next time.